Hi everyone, Gwil from Fologram here. In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to locate models in physical space using uh, QR codes, which we call placement markers. Locating models in physical space is really, really useful for a couple of reasons. The first is repeatable placement. So if you want to locate a model in exactly the same place um, over and over again, for instance, if you're working on something one day, you turn off your phone or your mixed reality headset, come back the next day, you want to connect Fologram and see the model in exactly the same place, you would use markers for that. The other application is for shared experiences. So if you have multiple mobiles or headsets connected to the same session running Fologram and you want to see the same model in the same place, you can all locate the model with the same set of markers and then interact with it um, as part of the same session and view one another's changes in real time. The third application is if you want very precise placement. So if you want um, to locate models with up to sort of three millimeters of precision, um, then you will need to locate them with multiple markers. And the fourth application is for doing overlays of physical objects. So for instance, you might want to take a uh, construction site, overlay it with a model of what's about to be built, or you might want to take a tool in a workshop, overlay it with a part which is about to be fabricated, or perhaps you want to take a physical model of something which is being presented uh, to a client and you want to overlay that with different interactive uh, design options in mixed reality. In all of these use cases, you would want to use placement markers to reliably and accurately locate that model rather than the default UI, which is the tap and point mechanic for locating models, which is a great way of quickly viewing things in space, but it isn't necessarily re reliable or accurate. Uh, the other thing that we'll talk about today is um, how to recognize drift with placement markers. So this is really important because um, Fologram uses coordinates defined in QR codes to correct for drift in your model, which just naturally occurs um, when you're using a SLAM based AR where the phone or the mixed reality headset is trying to work out where it is in space based off changes that um, it's tracking in its using its onboard cameras. So just by default, that way of positioning uh, virtual objects with a virtual camera is it's it, sort of the larger the environment is, you tend to expect more and more imprecision in how accurately those um, virtual objects are registered in physical space. We connect correct for that using coordinates um, defined by these QR codes. But if the QR codes aren't very accurately positioned in space, then that correction can't happen uh, properly. And so depending on the strategy you're using for like laying out your markers, you might run a risk of inaccurately placing those markers and inadvertently creating even more drift and imprecision um, than if you hadn't used markers at all. All right, so I've got a model here, which we'll use as an, as an example. Um, it's a the little chunk of a, a project to be built out of aluminium strips. And we're going to view that in AR by default. I think I've got it loaded up here already. There's our model um, sitting here on my desk. Um, now, if we were going to actually fabricate this model, let's say we'd made all of these strips and we now wanted to know how to assemble those strips together, make sure we were locating them in um, uh, in the correct place. This is a perfect use case for AR because this is the kind of thing that would be quite challenging to do from drawings. Um, you'd probably need to build a set of formwork to locate these strips. And instead what we could do is with AR, we just have a virtual template showing us where each strip needs to go. And we try to match that up with a physical strip during assembly. And we know we're gonna be working towards a physical copy of this design model. So to locate the model in physical space using markers, we're going to use the XR marker command in Rhino. And what that will then ask us to do is to specify a location for the marker. I'm going to make my first marker at 000, and a label for the marker. And a marker label is just a name that you can recognize so that you um, uh, can place the correct marker, defining some particular coordinate in the correct physical location. Now I've got two markers set up on my desk here already. They're called F3 and F4. So I'm gonna call this one F3 and it goes and adds a marker to my model. And then I'm gonna run that XR marker command again. And I'm gonna make one at 1500 in the X, zero, zero, and call that F4. 
So they're the two markers which I already have set up on my desk here called F3, F4. If you haven't actually uh, already set up your physical markers, you can run the XR marker command and then click print all to um, open a web browser with the UI for creating these QR codes and then printing them out. And we have a, a subsequent tutorial video which looks specifically at just how to create physical markers. So that's, that's how you can print them. Markers can be reused. So you can print a set of markers, um, maybe you go laminate those or something so that they're reusable. Um, and then you can use them in sort of any uh, Fologram application you want. You just have to specify the labels uh, which um, you used previously in those printed markers. So I've got my two markers now, they're added to the model. Let's go ahead and um, try and uh, snap our model onto those markers. Just to make sure everything runs smoothly, I'm gonna go and XR stop and XR start this session because it's been running for a little while. Okay, great, we've got our model all um, appearing properly. Now to locate a model um, with markers in AR, so long as the markers have been defined in Rhino, um, whenever the phone or mixed reality headset detects one of those markers with its front facing camera, it's gonna try and snap the model onto uh, that marker. So I'm gonna try and scan this marker with my phone. It's a little bit awkward because my mic is in the way. Okay, that one's scanned and you'll know that it's scanned just because it's going to show a, um, a little blue box outline and then we'll scan this one over here. That's also showing that blue box out outline and now that model should be positioned using those two markers and it's showing up much closer to me now. So what we've done here is we've located this model relative to these markers in a very precise uh, coordinate space. So we now know for sure that this strip here is going to be precisely this far away from this uh, location of the marker. So if we were gonna do some fabrication now, so long as this marker was attached to um, this piece of uh, black plywood here, which I'm using as a desk, and we started fixing our strips to the same piece of black plywood, which we're using as a desk, then that relative um, position between the physical object and the markers would remain fixed and we'd have a really great uh, setup for using this as a template for fabrication. Now markers are saved in your model if you upload them so if you wanted to use this um, assembly example uh, without having a real-time connection to Rhino you could you can upload the model um, these marker positions will be saved and if you download that model view it on your device and scan these same uh, F3 and F4 markers then the model is going to be located in exactly the right spot, just like before. A couple of quick notes on markers. So, how um, you can there's sort of many different ways to locate models with markers. You can use a single marker, in which case what Fologram will try to do is um, use both the position and orientation of the marker, the, de the detected QR code, sorry, to locate your model. Um, or if you use two markers then Fologram is only going to use the corner point of the QR code um, to locate the model and then it'll set up the rotation of your model using the axis defined by those two markers and Z will always be up. So using two markers is far more precise than, um, oh sorry, Z will always be up if your markers are located in the same plane. If your markers aren't located in the same plane, you actually have a, um, a command which can change how our models are oriented to markers. So in XR properties, we can change this default alignment. So we can force Z to always be up, uh, or we can set it to be free, in which case when we have two markers, the model is going to be oriented to those two markers with six degrees of freedom, which is useful if you're trying to orient um, digital objects onto large moving physical parts. If you're wanting to do um, align something uh, on an object which isn't moving, generally you're wanting to keep Z up, it's more precise. So using two markers, it's gonna use the position of the codes and then the axis between the two markers for doing rotation of your model. If you use uh, more than two markers, we try to interpolate between all of those codes um, for positioning the marker. 
Now, there are um, implications for precision for each of these different marker placement strategies. And if you go onto our docs, you can have a look at the model placement guide here to um, review the sort of different benefits and trade-offs to different marker placement strategies. Usually you're trading off the simplicity of locating the QR codes accurately in physical space with the um, ability of Fologram to correct for drift. So the simplest way to locate models is using two markers, besides obviously using one marker, but that doesn't actually add very much precision at all. So using two markers, what you end up with is it's very, very easy to locate two markers in space using a tape measure. Um, you can do that very accurately. You have quite high precision along the axis defined by the two markers, but you have lower and lower precision as you move further away from that axis. And that's just to do with how Fologram is correcting for drift using the tracked positions of the markers. Um, you can position multiple markers along that linear axis that is also, again, more accurate and still reasonably easy to locate those markers. You then end up with quite high precision along that, that axis and lower precision as you move further away from the axis. You can use a 2D grid of markers um, where we always recommend using a cross laser to very accurately locate out that 2D grid. Otherwise, it's very easy um, to accidentally you know, have introduced some error in the position of markers in that grid. That's a great way of um, uh, setting up, say, like, say you're doing assembly in a factory space, you're always using some section of that factory for doing assembly over and over again. You'd probably set up a grid of markers on the floor of that space, um, which would give you a consistent, reliable, accurate virtual environment for doing assembly. You can also locate markers on um, workpiece corners. So this is things like slab edges on an existing or column grids on an existing construction site. Uh, that gives you decent precision um, or a workpiece grid or on known features um, of an object. So depending on the use case and the existing conditions of this physical space where you're using AR, there might be different marker strategies which are appropriate um, for you to implement. And I'd strongly recommend checking out the docs to understand what the sort of benefits and drawbacks are of each. So the last thing that I want to show in this tutorial is um, to try to show you how to recognize drift in a model. So if we have located, um, or how to recognize drift, which is introduced by inaccurate marker placement specifically. So if you have gone and set out your markers and you've accidentally misread the tape measure, or maybe you're trying to set them out in a grid and you haven't used a cross laser or something like that, it can be quite easy uh, to accidentally place markers in the wrong place and to see your model moving around a lot, far more than you would expect when you use markers because you'd expect very little movement after you um, place uh, models with, with markers as long as you're following best practices and you've read all of the docs. And so if you're using markers, models moving around a lot, it could be that the marker simply isn't actually placed in the right or expected position. So I'm gonna rescan these two markers now. Okay, I've scanned both of them. There's my model. Uh, where I would expect it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one of these markers pretty dramatically into a different place. I'm going to try and scan that marker now that I've moved it. Okay, it's snapped on. And as we move our phone around now, what we should see Actually, I'm going to make this far more dramatic. I'm going to put these two markers right next to one another. Okay, there's one there and there's one there. Okay, so rather than being 1500 mil apart now, these two markers are sort of more like, well, 30 mil apart. And as we move this, our phone left and right, hopefully you can see that that model appears to move a pretty huge amount relative to the physical space that it's in. It's no longer seeming fixed in space at all. You can see that relative to the blue cup up the back there, that model is moving by kind of maybe 10 centimeters as I move that phone left and right. So that's because the markers aren't actually located in the expected position um, or expected physical coordinates. There's some imprecision in the location of the markers and therefore 
the drift correction isn't happening properly and we're actually overcorrecting for drift and locating that model in the incorrect location. So if you're finding the models moving around a lot after you've used markers, some good rules of thumb. First, just try and placing the model with one marker and walking around and seeing if you get drift. Then try placing it with two, seeing if that uh, improves things a little bit. If you're still getting a lot of drift and you're confident the markers are in the right place, the, we would always recommend running the precision test, which will tell you just how much drift you have in your space. You can find the precision test on our docs.